Coming up in this episode, the Beam NG Police Department has gained a new unit. The winners selected from the members of my channel are NRZ400, The Annihilator, and Miai Balaga. If you're ready for another episode, smash the like button and I hope you'll enjoy the video. The police investigation of last month's incident has developed a lot since then. The department has updated us on their investigation. The driver of the van said he didn't know the person whose body was found in the back. He told the police he'd been forced to drive the van or else someone would kill his family. The police began investigating the group that had made the threat. Opera GX Are you a gamer and you still use Google Chrome? How dare you? Opera GX can save you much power so you can game even harder. Opera GX is also on mobile, GX Mobile, and it can be connected to the desktop version. So now even your phone can save some power. You can download GX Mobile with the QR code on the screen. And it's free. How can Opera GX save your power? Check GX Control Panel. You can manage limits for your RAM, network, and CPU. No more lags in games while your browser is open, bro. And yes, you can still listen to music or have more tabs open without hurting your performance. Are you scared of losing all your previous browser settings? Opera GX got your back. Use Quick Import Tool and get all your settings into Opera GX and just continue browsing with all your history, bookmarks, and cookies. In addition to Opera having its extension store, Google Chrome extensions are compatible with Opera browsers. You can quickly go to the Chrome Web Store and install any extension you want. So. What are you waiting for? Go into my video description and download Opera GX using the links on the top. Or just check out pinned comment with all links you need. Thank you Opera GX for sponsoring my video. Their investigation uncovered an organized group connected to corrupt government officials. After additional investigation, the police had collected enough probable cause to issue arrest warrants for multiple suspects. Several suspects headed to a supply cache at the docks were blocked and arrested by the SWAT team. When the BIA searched the docks, they found shipping containers filled with illegal immigrants and expensive supercars. That was all the evidence they needed to convict the suspects in court. But whose body was in the van that started all of this? When the DNA was run through CODIS, it returned to Ryan Wellington, a government official. Following multiple interviews, the police department released their findings. Mr. Wellington had been fighting against human trafficking, threatening the business of this secretive organization. Known as the West Coast Crushers, the members were sentenced to life in prison. At least 50 immigrants were freed from the shipping containers and five supercars were confiscated. Michael was packing his things to move out of his parents' house and into his own apartment. He headed to work after filling his trunk with clothing. He had to walk a few minutes to reach his job after parking his car. His work shift passed quickly, and after eight hours, he was excited to go move into his new home. When he returned to the parking lot, he couldn't find his car. His heart felt like it had stopped, and he immediately notified the police that his car had been stolen. When officers responded, he gave them all the details about his car. A week passed with no progress on the case. Then one morning, Officer Owen responded to a vehicle accident. After checking the license plates of both vehicles, he discovered one had been reported stolen. He called for backup, then dispatch contacted Michael. After arriving at the scene, he confirmed that the car was his. Unfortunately, it was totaled and the suspect was in critical condition. 
His belongings were missing, but when the police searched the home of the suspect, they located all of his missing property in the suspect's garage. After recovering from his injuries, the suspect was sentenced to 10 years in prison for driving under the influence, causing an accident, criminal negligence, and vehicle theft. Detective Julia Anderson has just started her shift. She was driving an unmarked Crown Victoria when she was dispatched to a call involving a deceased body discovered in a mine shaft. Meanwhile, Mark was leaving a gas station and waiting at an intersection to turn left into a tunnel. Daniel was driving his Toyota Camry to work, loudly playing music in his car. Suddenly, he realized he'd left his laptop at home. He decided it was safe to make a U-turn when he saw Mark's truck turning across the road. At this time, Detective Anderson approached the intersection at approximately 90 to 100 miles per hour. His loud music made it impossible to hear Detective Anderson's siren, and he failed to check his side view mirror. She survived the impact, but was trapped inside her vehicle as gasoline began leaking from the ruptured tanker. Moments later, the entire scene erupted in flames. Mark escaped from his truck without injury, but Detective Anderson couldn't be rescued in time. Daniel was cited for failing to yield to an emergency vehicle and for making an illegal U-turn, then arrested and booked for involuntary manslaughter. Jacob was on a long road trip in his ETK 856T. Visibility was greatly reduced due to rain and fog. At the same time, Joseph was driving his new Procyon Centauri SUV. Officer Barbady was driving his Ibishu Pessima, and Mike was driving his Bruckel Legrand with two passengers in the oncoming lane. When Mike tried to overtake a Gavril Romer SUV, the low visibility prevented him from seeing oncoming traffic. He hit Officer Barbady's patrol vehicle at high speed. Joseph and Jacob were unable to stop, slamming into the patrol vehicle. A truck driver witnessed the accident and called 911. Paramedics and additional officers responded seven minutes later. Officer Barbady sustained a broken neck and a serious head injury. Unfortunately, he died six days later. Mike was severely injured and was pronounced deceased by paramedics at the scene. His passenger sitting behind him broke both legs and cracked a rib, and his passenger in the front seat broke his left leg and both arms. Joseph was uninjured, while Jacob received minor bruising. All vehicles were eventually repaired, except for the Pessima and the Legrand, which were both totaled. Officer Perry was on patrol when he encountered two wrecked vehicles and an additional stop vehicle. One of the vehicles, a Gavril Grandmaster, was on fire. Officer Perry stopped and checked the burning vehicle and found the deceased body of the driver. The driver of the Procyon Centauri was injured and unconscious. Officer Perry requested paramedics to the scene. When Officer Perry spoke to the driver of the stop vehicle, he told him he's captured the accident on his dash cam. The footage revealed the Gavril Grand Marshal being chased by an ETK K-Series. An occupant of the K-Series discharged a firearm into one of the Grand Marshal's tires, causing the accident before fleeing the area. After requesting backup, Officer Perry left the driver of the Centauri in the care of the paramedics while he began searching the area for the K-Series. It was quickly located before fleeing from responding officers at high speed. Officer Pablo executed a successful PIT maneuver, but this turned out to be a serious mistake when the K-Series was sent into oncoming lanes and collided with a van. The collision triggered a five-car pileup. Officer Perry requested additional medic units to assist the victims of the new accident scene. The suspect driving the K-Series died on impact, and so did two additional victims in the pileup. Tennessee State Trooper Robert Williams was patrolling the highway early one morning when he encountered someone on the side of the road. When he stopped to investigate, he discovered two people, a male and a female, 
both approximately 17, 18 years of age, deceased and with over 40 stab wounds to their heads and chests. Trooper Williams notified his lieutenant, who responded along with three additional troopers, deputies from the nearby sheriff's office, and Detective Hans Moore. During the investigation, it was discovered that the two decedents had been in a romantic relationship. Many interviews were held, but the case went cold after a few days. Five days later, a 911 caller reported seeing something on the side of a ride. Detective Moore responded with Trooper Williams and two deputies. They discovered a young male and a young female, embracing each other and dead from over 50 stab wounds. Once again, it was discovered they had been in a romantic relationship. When the second case also went cold, Detective Moore requested assistance from the FBI. 